Now that we know how to use the binome PDF and binome CDF functions in order to be able to find both the probability distribution and the cumulative probability distribution respectively, we want to be able to use that for new and interesting problems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a whole bunch of different problems in terms of setup and wording. Now this table right here is in your note sheet for your exam. So you don't have to memorize it and you don't have to put it on your own note sheet. It's going to be on the one that's given to you by the testing lab when you go to take your test. So this is already in there. So it's just a question of knowing how to use it and analyze it. Okay, so we are going to determine the indicated probability for a binomial experiment. Ah, so we're assuming right there that everything's binomial. Now obviously we're in this section, but remember for your exam you're going to want to look for phrases like that. Because if it says it's binomial somewhere, then this big old table applies. Alright, so um, with the given number of trials n and the given probability of success, which I think is 60 or 20 and 0.6 for the whole problem. So here we are in letter A. N is equal to 20, P is equal to 0.6. And we're asked to find the P parentheses X equals 8. All right, so that's the probability that X is 8. What, if I look at my rules here, probability of X is equal to a number. The symbol equals is right here. And I'm thinking in the words, it's the words equals. So I'm looking at the probability that X equals 8. And which means I'm going to use rule number one. Right, rule number one. So probability x equals eight. And when we get really lazy, we actually write it p parentheses eight, which is the same thing. So probability x equals eight. That would be binome PDF according to this rule, n, which is twenty, p, which is 0.6. And for this one, I actually am going to put in the value. Oh, I have to type it. Binome PDF n, 20, p, 0.6, and I am going to put in a value of 8 because I'm not trying to come up with a table here. I'm actually trying to come up with a specific value, and that specific value will be given to me out of the calculator. <laughs> so let me see here. Let me quit. Clear all this out just to make it easier. Second distribution. Go to binome PDF right here. n was 20, p is 0.6, x is 8. And I go to paste it and I press enter again and I get 0 0.035497 which I rounded to 0 0.0355 but I used rule number one to do it. I'll just write that down. Actually I'll put it in parentheses just to make it clear. It's just hiding. There you go. Oh rats. Hold on one second. There, I just made a little note right there that I'm using rule number 8. Alright, now what about the next one? Well, n is 20 again, p is 0 0.6, so that's not hard. And I can see the symbol, it's less than or equal to. Alright, so less than or equal to, that's this symbol right here, so that's, that's rule number 3. So I'm going to mean less than or equal to, right, I'm saying that in English, which means, well, let's think, how low can x go? Well, zero. Zero is as low as it can go. So zero, one, two, three, all the way up until ten. That would be, let's think, binome CDF, if you look at rule number three, binome CDF, which is letter B for me. Again, it might be in a different spot on your calculator. Twenty, zero point six, and according to this rule, I actually use the value I was given, which is ten. So I'm going to use 10 right here and press paste. And there we have it. So it's 0 0.02477. So you're using rule number 3. Oh, sorry, this wasn't rule number 8. There's no rule number 8. It's rule number 1. Sorry about that. This is rule number 3. Oh, really not going to like me today. There we go. Okay, now what about the next one? Well, this is just a less than, not a less than or equal to. It doesn't have that extra horizontal line on it. So since it's less than or equal to, then that means I want it to be 0 up through 11. I don't want it to get all the way to 12, right? 12 is too high. I want it to stop at 11 because 11 is less than 12. So that's binome CDF. So let me hit the second entry button. 
binome CDF. Oh, to do that, I did second enter because everything is what I want already. And I'm going to make it stop at 11. So I'm going to type 11 right here and hit enter. And I get 0. 0.4044. And again, if you really want to go to the distribution menu, hit alpha B binome CDF, it says at the top of the screen, which is what I wanted. And I hit 11 here, enter, paste, and there you have it. But since I already am working with binome CDF, it's already right there. So, All right, so we used rule number two on that one, right? Because it's a less than rule. The less than rule is rule number two, just straight less than. All right, letter D is a greater than. You can see it in the symbol. It's a greater than with no extra bar on it. So that is 1 minus binome CDF. Now these are the hardest to see. So greater than 15 means 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, because remember we stop at 20 since 20 is our highest number. So I want to go from 16 up through 20. So what that means is that I take away from 0 to 15. So I have it, the calculator add up 0 through 15 for me with binome CDF. And then if I take it away from 1, I'll know what the 16 through 20 added up to because the lowest x can go is 0, the highest it can go is 20. And all the probabilities have to make 1. So I'm sort of using the complement rule, right? I take away the part I don't want, 0 0.9490, from 1 and I'll have what I wanted. Now, to show this with a calculator, I want to show you something. So you can actually type this all at once if you want to. So if I hit 1 and then minus, here, clear, clear this out, 1 minus, then I go to the second distribution menu, I hit alpha B, or if I just use my arrows I can get there, alpha B, binome CDF, 20.6, now I'm going to use 15 because I want to be bigger than 15, I want to be 16 and beyond, so I want to stop the CDF at 15. And that's what it says to do right here in the table. It says for greater than, use x. So I'm going to use the 15 that was given to me. right? Because right there, x is 15. So I'm going to type 15, enter. And then I paste. And this is why we paste. This is not why, why we do not calculate. Because when we paste, we can paste it into the line with the 1 minus already there. And if I hit enter, it'll figure it out for me as 0 0.05095. So that would be rounding, the 5 rounds the 9 up to a 10. So 0510. And there you have it. So we're using rule number 4 is what we're using. But very carefully. <laughs> okay. Now what if we use words? What if it's the probability that x is at most 12? Okay, so at most, at most is right here, at most, right? That's less than or equal to, so that's another rule number three. At most 12 would mean less than or equal to 12. All right, so less than or equal to 12 would be, according to rule number three, binome CDF N20, P.6, X. X is the number I was given, which is 12. So I'd use second distribution, Put alpha b 20 comma 0.6 comma 12. Enter. And then I paste it in and I press enter. I get 0 0.5841. All right, there we have it. Oops, that's a 12 right there. 12. There we go. All right. Last but not least, the hardest one, which is going to be a rule number five. So this was another rule number four right here, or rule number three, excuse me, rule number three right there. But the last one is at least. At least is the trickiest because it's rule number five. It's greater than or equal to. So it has a subtraction over here, one minus, because you're doing that complement thing. Because CDF always starts at zero and adds up. So you have to take from 0 up through x minus 1, right? That's what, it stops at x minus 1 over here, and then you take the whole thing away from 1. So I'm going to do 1 minus the probability that x is uh, greater than 15. 
So I want the probability that x is greater than 15. So let's see if I can do this. The probability that x is greater than 15. That's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it up to 14. Take all the probabilities up to 14. Then take those away from 1, and I'll know what 15 through 20 made, because 20 is the stopper. right? We end at 20 because 20 is our end. So the whole thing, the binome CDF and this probability have got to make 1, because they're complements of each other. So if I make the calculator find up to 14, and then I just take it away from 1, I'll have my answer. And again, you can type this all at one step. You don't have to do it in two. So 1 minus alpha distribution. Oop, I spelled it. I didn't. Sorry, not alpha distribution, second distribution. Second distribution, there it is. Alpha B, 20.614. We want X minus 1. X was given to us as 15, so we use X minus 1, which is 14. Paste, enter. And sure enough, I get 0.1256, just like I said we would. All right, now that we have some familiarity with all of our rules, and noticing that rule number six, or excuse me, rule number five is the trickiest of all of them, let's see if we can apply it to a particular problem. So I'm going to scroll down a couple pages. The next page is just instructions on what we just did. And then let's look at this multiple choice question. Now remember that we've already figured out that this is a binomial probability distribution with n equal to 20 and p equal to 1 out of 5. So let me remind everybody of that real quick. We figured that out right here in this example, right? This is 20. The probability of success is 1 fifth. So we already did that, so I'm just reminding everybody of that because we can use that to find the probability values we're looking for. Okay, so we're guessing on this 20 question multiple choice test. So P of 4, they just want us to describe it in words and then find its value. So to describe it in words, P parentheses 4 means you're going to get 4 correct. So that's the probability that x equals 4. So let me write that up. There, it's the probability the student guesses correctly on 4 of the questions out of 20. Sorry. Now what is it? Well, this is an exact probability because it's the probability that x equals 4. Remember, if you look at the table, it says a given number. If you're given a number like 4, x equals 4, then you can use binome PDF. So this is what we're going to use, binome PDF. For us, our n is 20, and our probability of success is 1 out of 5. So to find that, I would use second distribution, binome PDF, which is letter A. I would say 20. 20, 20, I would say 1 fifth, and I would say 4. I actually want a specific value here. I don't want a table, so I'm going to tell it 4. And it gives me 0 0.2182. Done. All right, now it wants the prob P parentheses x is less than 6. So that would mean that we have less than 6 correct. Okay, so that would be the probability the student guesses correctly on less than six questions out of 20. Less than six, by the way, would be less than or equal to five, right? So they would guess correctly on less than or equal to five. So if we look at, this one was rule number one for A, the one we're looking at now, less than six would be, scroll back up real quick, less than six would be rule number two. Right? So less than 6, that's why we use 5 right here, because x minus 1 is the same thing as less than or equal to 5. So you could think of rule 2 right there, or rule 3 if you want to change it. All right, so let's stick with rule 2. So we're going to use binome CDF, right, because this is rule number 2, and it's going to be 20 comma point, or 1 fifth comma 5. So 20 comma 1 fifth. You can actually type it as 6 take away 1. It'll figure out the number for you as 5, right? Or you can just do that. So you get 0 0.8042. All right, so letter A was a rule 1. Letter B is a rule 2. To pass the test, the student must answer 70% correctly. Would it be unusual to pass? 
All right, so let's figure out what passing is. Passing means you have to score 70%, but 70% of 20 is 0 0.70 times 20, which would be 14. So you have to get 14 correct. All right, interesting. So to do that, let's figure out x greater than or equal to 14. So that would be rule number five. So I want the probability that x is greater than or equal to that. Okay, so x is greater than 14 because you need to score 14 or higher. That's a rule number five question. So it's one minus binome CDF 20 n one fifth 14 take away one because rule number five says you do x minus one. So I'm going to do 13. So let's see if I go to set. Oh, not that way. Quit. <laughs> one minus. Go to second distribution. Hit letter B. 20, sure, 1 fifth, sure. Here I want 14 take away 1. Oops, not 114. 14 take away 1. Or in other words, I want 13. So you can type the number 13, you'll get the same answer. If you don't believe me, your second entry. If I just change this to a 13 and delete the rest, there, it's the same thing. That's scientific notation, right? So that is 1.84 with five with e negative six means the decimal place is six places to the um, to the left. So if I move it six places to the left, then I'd have the one, that's the first place, and then five zeros. That is extremely unusual. So if you have learned nothing else today, learn that you should never guess, randomly guess, on a 20 question test, right? Because your chances of passing are well below 5%. As a matter of fact, it's below 1%. This is very, 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 very unusual. You can say the word very for every zero, right? This is very unusual. Um, so you would not want to randomly guess on a test like this because you're not going to pass, right? Passing would be very difficult.